Another storm brewing tonight, this one in Rome, where scandals threatened to overshadow the election of the new pope. Just as Pope Benedict moved up the date of the vote for the conclave, Britain's Cardinal Keith O'Brien, he stepped down after reports that he behaved inappropriately. And now, questions beginning to swirl around an American cardinal. Britain's Cardinal Keith O'Brien said he will not attend the conclave because his presence would be a distraction. This weekend, a British newspaper reported that four Scottish priests claimed that O'Brien made unwanted sexual advances on them in the 1980s. Allegations O'Brien denies. In the latest of several scandals that are overshadowing this ancient process. Other voting cardinals are known to have covered up for pedophile priests. L.A.'s Roger Mahoney for one. Yesterday, President Obama's former ambassador to the Holy See suggested Mahoney consider bowing out as well. He has to decide for himself, um, you know, in terms of, of what is in the best interest of, uh, of the church. And then there's the Italian papers, full of reports of a dossier prepared for the Pope's eyes only, supposedly detailing a sex and blackmail scandal inside the Vatican. This is beginning to sound like a Dan Brown novel. Well, the Catholic Church doesn't do dull. Turns out a dossier does exist. The findings of an internal investigation into last year's VataLeak scandal. But only the Pope knows what's in it. Yesterday, Benedict met privately with three elderly investigators. The Italian press calls them the 007 Cardinals. The Cardinals uh, who did the investigation into corruption inside the Vatican are known to know everything. And so if they say, Eh, I don't think this candidate is the best idea at this point. That will be taken very seriously. And the Pope has now issued new rules on the timing of the conclave that could fast track this election potentially. Ultimately, though, the timing will be up to those cardinals. And for more, we're very pleased to be joined by Dr. Paul Lakeland. He's chair of the Center for Catholic Studies at Fairfield University. He's written extensively on the Catholic Church, one of his many books called Catholicism at the Crossroads, How the Laity Can Save the Church, which won an award from the Catholic Press Association as well. Doctor, thank you very much for a few minutes. And we want, I want to talk about the laity because I think that's part of the uh, unspoken and, and most important constituency, but we got a little bit more clarity as to the process. And in all likelihood, um, we're talking about probably a week um, from this Friday, if not a little bit longer, when they'll close the doors and we'll wait for the right. black or white puffs of smoke. That, that seems to be the word, but, but they can't fast track what happens after that. You yes. know, I mean, everybody says they'd like to be home for Easter. Uh, they'd like to have a pope by Easter. But once they get into that room, the dynamics are very complex, and they have to arrive at a two-thirds majority. Uh, and they can, they've got to be there until that happens. You know. They're uh, locked in. That's the conclave. And with again, the key. for full disclosure, for, for a person who, who, who loves the church and is a practitioner, I will say, I resent some folks when, when, when they don't want to talk about what's surrounding the climate right now. If you think about for a second what's happening in L.A. with Mahoney, um, what we saw, for example, even Cardinal Dolan. He was in Milwaukee testifying in a case about uh, abuse allegations that happened uh, back when he was with the Milwaukee Archdiocese, not him specifically, but those uh, under his leadership. Um, and then even the question of where will this pontiff, Benedict, retire? He's going to stay within the Vatican City, no likelihood. There'll be no exposure here for criminal cases. The point is, and now we have this ongoing scandal, which many people thought didn't have a lot of substance to it, but now at least seems to be percolating. I don't know what the next pontiff can do, but it's just, for those who thought this black cloud would kind of just vanish or dissipate the last few years, they're so delusional. This thing will hang over the church for a while. I don't know if a speech will clear it up or a messaging, well, but it's there. I, if, if you mean the sex abuse scandal, yes. who knows how long that will go on. But the latest uh, supposed uh, problem with uh, you know, gay clergy and being blackmailed, this is something new. And this is now in the hands of, well, it's been in the hands of three cardinals who've reported to the Pope. Those, uh, those people uh, know, and I think the cardinals in general know, that what we have, what has to happen at the conclave is that they have to, whoever, else, whoever they choose, African, Latin American, doesn't yep. matter, has to be someone with the energy to address these problems and with the skill of knowing how 
the Vatican works. Okay, but doctor, hmm. if you think about it in recent years, what has been the messaging from the Vatican? They returned the mass to a more literal translation. We're going in the reverse right, rather than the, uh, we're, in, we're putting the car in reverse rather than forward. Forget about the idea of welcoming women in the priesthood, allowing priests to marry, et cetera. W why do you think the next pontiff would find any support um, within the Vatican uh, or elsewhere oh, to no, actually... Oh, no, I don't know that he would find any support. I think that one of the primary responsibilities of the next pontiff is to clean house in the Vatican. And I think everybody is aware of that. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that the cardinals will get their acts together and produce such a person, but that's, in my view, that's the number one priority. Now, I've heard, Doctor, that one of the things will happen is behind the closed doors, there will be as honest and frank a conversation about the state of the church. And as I talk about the basic math, fewer people filling up the pews, uh, fewer dollars that are going in the offertories, fewer priests that are joining, that are going through the seminaries and filling the ranks and sisters into those vocations, parochial schools closing at alarming numbers. Um, do they at least acknowledge the reality or do you think more say, fine, at least we'll be left um, with the com truly committed and not those that are the frequent Sunday visitors? Well, I don't know. I mean, some say that. First of all, I mean, I think that the, that conversation is part of what will be taking place in the week before the conclave, not yep. during the conclave. Mm -hmm. Once they're in there, it becomes quite solemn, as far as we can tell. Secondly, your picture of the problems of the church are the problems of the church in Europe and North America. They're not the problems of the 60% of the church south of the equator. Mm, so sadly, financially, though, where most of the money's coming from, it is coming from uh, the western part of uh, the world. And the Vatican has felt that acutely. Yes, it is. But, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is the Vatican doesn't look at the church and say, oh, my God, look at our problems. We've got all these people wanting women priests or wanting to change the rules on birth control or something like that. The Vatican says... We've got these people in North America wanting that, but look at all the people who aren't even asking that question. And the Vatican's, uh, the Vatican's energies and attention is, is buoyed up by the vitality, as they see it, of the church in Africa and Latin America and in Asia, which is one of the reasons why well, the cardinals uh, are expected at least to consider viable candidates from south of the equator. Okay, but I'm going to ask a question that really is stealing it from your title about the laity. Okay, we all heard when the scandal broke here in the United States the laity would be hurt. Um, be nice if that was always the case. Um, but my question is, in the consideration of the next pontiff and really where he will hopefully take this church, is the laity being heard more than it was before? No. Hmm. <laughs> that, that would be my opinion. No, because the problem with the, for the laity is while there are, there are certainly vocal laity, and there are vocal laity on the right and on the left, there is no real uh, vehicle or forum in which the laity legitimately can have a say. Mm -hmm. So that means two kinds of things happen. On the left, people speak out and are labeled, I don't know, dissidents, and then they're discounted. Or to the more conservative end of the church, the better placed, uh, more powerful, perhaps wealthier Catholics uh, tend to have some say because mm -hmm. they have the ear of the bishops often. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating time for the church. And as you said, I, I think aptly put, it is a crossroads. Um, how much will change, though? I, I just temper um, for those who think that a new pontiff will bring great change. It doesn't usually work that way. No, but I think what you have to say is that uh, change, great change, will not happen dramatically unless it's through the pontiff, because in the, the church is so slow. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to remind people of this. They used to actually let priests marry. It actually happened until it got a little bit too costly and there was too much of uh, A thousand nepotism. years ago. Yes, exactly, a thousand <laughs> years ago. Back to the future. All right, Dr. Lakeland, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Pleasure. All right, we have, when we come back, two anniversaries that fall on today and both of the solemn variety. We'll explain when we come back, so please stay with us.